Hello, Hello, I'm Stephen. I'm Nell. So we serve in the Millam congregation here. It's in the Lake District in Lake Cumbria. District, and we've been here for about a year and a half. Yeah. Isn't that right? And we're both regular pioneers. Yes, and we're really looking forward to being able to share with you some of the experiences that got us here. And we're just really thankful that you've taken the time to want to listen to our story. Yeah. Mm. So see, you do you do make a sacrifice. You don't always have the money to buy the best clothes or have expensive cars. Or you could go off on holidays and stuff like that. So it is a sacrifice. You use a lot of your time in the full-time service. Uh, I signed the paper saying I was going to go to Chelmsford. Because uh, that was my, oh, I'd love to go to Chelmsford. And then it turns out they want me in the school. Which I was like, okay. I don't really know anything about this school. Uh, but they said yes. And then it turns out I, I sat in a classroom for like two months. Learning about the Bible. And I thought I was going to do ministry. But we didn't really. <laughs> we sat there for two months learning. But uh, it was funny. It was like completely out of my comfort zone. Um, first time I've ever left home and been away from mum and dad and everybody else. But it, it was really cool because you just grow as an individual and you get to rely on Jehovah a lot more. Like I remember one time I always took about three weeks, four weeks to prepare for a talk. And I only had about less than two weeks to prepare for talks in the school along with our assignments. So... I was feeling the pressure thinking, man, I can't do this, I can't do this. But every time I had to get up on the platform, I just found out that, oh my goodness, you could just do it. It's like Jehovah just flick the switch and turn everything back on, you know, and just helped you to be able to remember what you prepared. So I realized when I was there that Jehovah puts you through a pressure cooker sometimes, but he doesn't do it that you actually break. He does it that you become stronger. So your fate increases. So even small ways like that, like giving talks, or even large ways, like leaving home and going somewhere else. Uh, that was one of the really cool things and that I got to experience. But it wasn't necessarily a goal I had. But it was um, it was something that was a really great blessing though. That I've always kept my blessings because afterwards I got to meet Nell. Uh, and got to make loads of cool friends. And you just get to experience something that's really unique in the sense of you you depend on Jehovah to pay the bills more than yourself. And I thought that was really cool. So when I started pioneering, it was in 2011, and I think I was 20, and I was only out of school. So what really encouraged me to start pioneering was a brother um, in my congregation who took me out and kind of basically set the goals for me. So I didn't really know what he was doing. I didn't think about it too much. So he invited me out on a Monday. Let's go out on a Monday and do ministry. And I was like, that's brilliant, yeah. Because he used to give me lattes from McDonald's. So I'd every time mm -hmm. go up ministry, he'd give me a latte. And I'd be like, yeah. And I collected all the stickers. <laughs> so I'd get a free one. Um, but then he just started saying, you know, you're doing like eight hours, nine hours this week. Um, why don't you try go do exhibitory? And I was like, oh, okay. And he said, it's like, it's only 12 hours, really, a week. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. And then I started doing that for a couple of months. And then he's like, you know, you're doing like 50 hours each month or more, why don't you try to go do regular? And I was like, oh, okay. So accidentally on purpose, he did basically set me up for doing Pioneer in the future. He basically just molded me to do that. And uh, that's that's who I started off the Pioneer for so long that I just basically, I loved it a lot uh, because I was choosing to go out with friends and it was just something that it became more enjoyable over time. Where because I was being dragged out by my mum and dad and stuff like that, it's just more annoying, you know. You just didn't want to do it. But now because I was choosing to go out, um, it just became more natural and just easy. At the start, it was just difficult and hard. But as time went by, it just became far more natural to talk to people mm. and just get to be more of a per people person. Ooh. Probably peer pressure would be a big one. Um, I mean, like t to be fair, one of the biggest ones. I mean, I didn't really necessarily have it as an issue because i lived with mom and dad at the time but i think financially there's a lot of insecurity in people as they grow up and the idea of you need a career where you don't you literally you can make money and enough money to do pioneering on whatever job you're given you know you don't have to be anything special so you don't need a trade necessarily you don't need to be going off to college or going off to university um i started off just doing windows I just did what my brother did. And that was it. I just did windows, did some grass cutting jobs, and I paid the bills. Like, my car was not the best anyway, starting off. We got through it. But I never had to worry necessarily about bills because I always knew it would be coming. So one of the big worries about people sometimes, I think, especially for younger ones, is that you need some type of protection uh, in order to do this. Or, you know, it's just like, oh, I need to 
do this first or that first in order to reach that goal, you know? So in that regard, I think one of the pressures sometimes that we might feel and I felt sometimes as well was the idea that I needed to make a certain amount in order to continue going, where in reality, Jehovah knows what you need six, seven, eight months in advance before you even get there. So I found that was really comforting and um, something that I learned as well, like sacrifices. You do give up a certain amount of luxury or a certain amount of comforts, but in the end, it's, it's really worth it, especially when you're, yeah, you save somebody's life, you know, change them forever, really. Prayer helped a lot to be able to cope with stresses um, and talk about problems and see them answered as well, you know, like sometimes, I remember I was in a, when I, Got to move up to Northern Ireland after I went to the school and um, I was really stressed about work and I was trying to think what do I need to do and one of the first jobs I got was working part-time for about 16 hours in a factory and um, I thought oh man that's not going to be enough for me type of thing but just when I thought when I was running out of a bit of money to be able to stay where I was living all of a sudden I got given extra hours and I got a pay rise as well and I was I was really happy about that. I felt really protected because in my head I was looking at it and I was like, oh no, I'm getting to this point in January. I'm thinking I'm not going to be able to do it. I might have to go back home. And then just at the last second, Jehovah was able to open the door to give me more money to whatever my circumstances required. So in my head, I was like, okay, here I was here. But by the time I got to January time and my circumstances changed and he's able to give me more so I found that when I was praying about it, you could and looking for it, you could see how Jehovah's Hand was helping you. So when you're chatting to him and talking about what you're going through, he's also paying attention to to what your needs are, and he does it at the right time, you know, in that regard. I found anyway for me. So my name is Chanel Atkinson, although I do not like my full name, so all of my friends call me Nell. I got baptized when I was thirteen. And I have been regular pioneering since I left school. Um, so I was about 16. Uh, no, that's not true. I was 18 when I left school. Um, and I have been regular pioneering ever since, which is quite a while, which I was amazed at when I lasted this long. <laughs> I think the biggest sacrifice I had to start pioneering was a was my love of music. That's probably the best way to explain it. I was in a specialist music school, so music was very important to me. I loved music, I loved composing, I wrote classical pieces that were performed in concerts. Um, but especially when I was a teenager and all of your emotions are a bit crazy, uh, being able to write songs that helped me explain how I felt and that people liked was really exciting. Um, and then one day when I was at school during an exam, I didn't realise there were music scouts there um, and I was signed to a label when I was 16. So that meant I was now going to be recording an album. I would do radio interviews. There was photo shoots. Um, and I had this initial idea that maybe I could use that to pioneer, that I would only have to, you know, record one or two days and then I can pioneer and that would be great. But I felt so empty. And I hated the music industry. I didn't like seeing how people's music was changed. And I'd started to not enjoy playing music anymore. And then I'd go to the Kingdom Hall and I'd feel guilty because you're hearing that you cannot slay for two masters. And here I was thinking, but I can pioneer, which had always been the dream. So it was a really hard decision for me to be able to walk away from music because... Growing up, we didn't have very much money. It was just me and my mum. And I had this idea of, you know, but what if it did work out? And what if I could be an exception to the rule and help my mum and also do what I loved? The, to pioneer and do music felt like the ultimate dream. Um, so to walk away from that at the time was very painful. But I look back now and I wish I had done it sooner. I wish I'd never even bothered with the music industry really. My whole life has been full of blessings. The minute that that I was announced at the meeting that I was a regular pioneer, Jehovah has totally opened the floodgates and things that I could have only dreamt of doing, he's just thrown into my lap. I mean, we've had the privilege of bringing three people into the truth. That in itself is huge. I've been 
able to serve in now two in need congregations, which I never thought was possible before. We do pray for all of the children every day and the teenagers. And I can't imagine how hard it is with the challenges that you have to face right now. I don't know what it's like to be you. But one thing I can absolutely promise, if you take that step, if you, even though you're nervous, even though maybe you don't definitely want to pioneer, just try it. Try it for one year and see what happens. Because if you do, I can promise you that Jehovah will make you happier than you ever imagined you can be. You will learn things that will blow your mind without it being hard work. You'll get to meet people that love you and make you feel more loved than anybody in the world could. And you'll never have to feel lonely. Doesn't matter what challenges you're going through, the challenges of what decisions you have to make. If you put Jehovah first, he is going to bless you and you are going to be happier than you could ever imagine yourself being. You'll never feel lonely because every single day Jehovah will show you what it means to be loved and to be truly happy. So no matter what decisions you have to come in the future, please just try and serve Jehovah. Try Pioneer for one year and see that that will be the starting point for the most incredible future you could have. Bye, Bye. kids. We'll see you soon. Be good. No, don't be good. Be good. Come to Millum. <laughs> Come to Millum. You'll see us in real life. We are 3D. <laughs> <laughs>